Hello and welcome to The View from the Vic, our new official Watford Football Club podcast. I'm John Marks and we'll be with you every week to bring you news and views from the Hornets camp and I'll be joined by special guests throughout, plus we'll hear from you, the supporters too. Shortly we'll be joined by Hornets captain Troy Deeney, goalkeeping coach Graham Stack and Kevin Affleck who works at the club as a media consultant and a little bit later on we'll be joined by the club's record goal scorer Luther Blissett, not a bad first lineup. Now, obviously, we're not all in the same place, so this is all being recorded remotely as we're all following the latest advice from government to stay at home and stay safe. You can find out the latest updates on our website at watfordfc.com, of course. Well, now I'm delighted to be joined on The View from the Vic by a trio of guests. So, hello and welcome to Troy Deeney. Hello. Graham Stack. Hello. And Kevin Affleck. Hi, John. Gents, uh, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, First things first, I guess. Uh, um, How are you all? How's life life with you at the moment? (laughs) Uh, I'm all good, mate. Not much. Um, Ticking over in the gym and that, obviously. But uh, just doing the family stuff, getting to enjoy a bit of family time. Obviously, miss being around the lads and that and having a crack, but uh, this time it's, it's put things into perspective, hasn't it? And uh, family's more important. So I'm just just chilling out and doing the family stuff and doing the things I probably wouldn't normally get to do. So it's only been a week, so I ain't torn my hair out yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm similar to Troy, to be fair, John. <clears throat> obviously, I've got four myself, and uh, I think it's just a case of, obviously, they've still got a lot of school work to do, my ones as well, with... Mm-hmm. Facts and and mocks and whatever whatever else they, they should have had. Um, so obviously, want to try and keep. Them, I mean, the biggest thing for me in our house is obviously trying to find a little bit of structure and a bit of a routine. Um, but without obviously being too uh, too much of a school teacher for the day, I want them to have a load of fun as well. So we've tried to mix it up. Um, I've done loads of housework, which is great. It took a bit of strain off me, so I've had my feet up now and again. But um, but now we're all healthy, which is the main thing. And as I think I said, normally we're off. Uh, the kids are at school, aren't they? So it's actually nice to be able to spend uh, the mornings having breakfast and uh, and doing stuff around the house and some exercise with, with the family, whereas normally we wouldn't get the opportunity to do that. So it's been good. And Kev, you and me are working. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've been um, I've been badgering Troy, trying to get him to do bits and pieces for us, and unable to go for a beer down the gate with the Stacky during this period of. <laughs> so, um, just been just been busy, but I, I've had a few symptoms myself, so I've been in isolation for for six six days now probably got eight days left um it's not been not been fun at all and you can see how just see how the, the vulnerable and people kind of less less healthy than me would really struggle with this at a couple of nights where it was where it was really bad i know it's going to sound like a bit of a nhs update but it just shows you how this this situation's really really real and and, and we've a lot of people spoken about football and this whole thing's put everything into perspective really when it comes down to for life or death, really, people's lives are at stake. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not been fun, but but through the worst of it now. Well, that, that's obviously that's obviously good to hear. But uh, yeah, just to say, it turns it turns like you say everything into very much very much real life. And yeah, obviously, I hope you get continue to continue to recover and, and feel hundred percent again again soon. That, that's what brings me on, Troy. Just sort of, you know, everybody looks to to you as you know Troy Dickney footballer. But I say, do you feel now that you know almost football is secondary, and and it's you know you're you're back to being just Troy and in the family, yeah. um, in the in the family home, and and like you say, that's... yeah, we're we're all sitting there like just wondering. I think all of us are trying to get as much information as possible um, in terms of like, watching you know Boris's updates and and things like that, and trying to understand what's going on. It's um it's a it's a difficult time as well if you completely take the football out of it. People have got like uncertainties with, with work and obviously that affects family and, and friends and stuff like that. So you kind of realise how privileged we are again as footballers that you we're not having to have that discussion yet about um, you know, wages being slashed or if people have to get laid out off work. So we're fortunate in that position, but um you're seeing the real Real life effects of, of what it has to others around you, and it, it brings you back down to back down to work. It's humbling as well, in a, in a sense that me and Stacky, I think we we joke about it every day, but we we genuinely buzz off off the environment of being footballers and being in and around lads, and 
we, we're appreciative of the job we have. But I think moments like this set you up and go, nah, do you know what? This is this is actually the best job in the world. So, um, yeah, I'm back to being Troy and dad and everything that comes with that. But honestly, I can't I can't say I'm I'm, I'm made out for this kind of role. I think the football is is is, is all I'm, I'm I'm really truly passionate about in that sense. And um, it's just trying to understand now that you know, as Stacky said, the school work needs to be done. You don't want to turn into a school teacher. You still want them to have fun because for as much as adults, we're panicking about what's going on. This is definitely an uncertain time for the kids as well. So it's uh, strange for them as much as it is for us. Uh, one thing I will say, I think mean, we're quite lucky with a group of lads we've got at the club that we have got a humble group anyway, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. And they are very grounded and they're very down to earth and they're very much family orientated. Um, so I just think, I probably think that's probably been a little bit easier for the group we've got because... They are, I think they are happy to be at home. They're happy to be around their kids. Yes, of course, they do miss, miss playing and miss training. There's no doubt about that. But uh, the flip side of that is I think we've got a trustworthy group and a reliable group. And I think knowing that the type of characters we've got, I don't think there's any element of them sort of, yes, they're probably at home. But fortunately enough, most will have the opportunity to be able to work out and keep fit. And obviously with their programmes and that, um, they'll be able to stay on top of things. But I think it's been nice because... Um, obviously they're, they're, they've also been given the opportunity to spend time with their family as, as Troy said but um, I think obviously the bigger picture is as we've all sort of touched on really is is, is the health and um, and the dangers of obviously what's going around and I don't think the club in itself will will, will want to risk or take any chances going back too early or too soon uh, certainly with, a, with, the, with the health and the fitness of players and staff and stuff like that so I think as frustrating as it's been it's still only been a week isn't it um and I think everyone seems to be managing okay, everyone I've spoken to. Um, but when you, when you realise that kids could potentially be off for six months, I think, you know, longer term, that's going to, I think that will that will cause some difficulties with some families as well, especially with work. If work hasn't reconvened for some, then I think the challenges will definitely get tougher along the way. Certainly for now, I think it's it's new, it's different for everyone and it's, and sort of everyone's finding stuff to do, but I'm not being funny, you know, in two, three weeks time, I think I'm going to run out because I've, I've absolutely, I don't think there's much left for me to do around the house to keep me occupied at the minute. So it's, I think that will throw out some challenges as well in due course. Yeah, I think we're, we're all sort of fearing the long haul, aren't we? But, you know, still that's that unknown of of, of how long how long this is going to be. And, you know, I think all, probably all, all the signs are that this, this still is just the beginning. And, you know, we are going to have to get used to life um, very much like this for, for a good few weeks few weeks yeah but before we just move on um as part of our um new podcast we're going to set a little um trivia teaser as as we run through no shouting out the answers if you get it straight away because i think this is tough um this is a little who am i uh, someone who's played for watford in the past we're going to give you the first two or three clues now we'll carry on chatting we'll chuck in some more clues a little bit later on then we'll give you the answer towards the end First set of clues are, I was born in the Balearic Islands in 1982. I played in La Liga, Liga in France, the Premier League, the Greek Super League and the Turkish Super League. I won the Copa del Rey as well as the Super League in both Greece and Turkey before arriving for a very short spell at Watford. Those are the first three, three clues. If you've worked it out for now at home, well, we Would can't you. Make you. It easier? Jesus. I don't know. Yeah. You've got to play. He's got to play. He's got a few quid by the sounds of it. Nice oh, job. Is he still <laughs> playing? Can we still get him? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that would give a little bit more. No, 1982, Stacky. You can work out how old he is. Yeah, I've got that. Yeah. Yeah. Troy, we know how I beat you on these. Yeah, no, we do it, mate, but... Can we get a position? Do we, do we get a position off you? Well, yeah, but that's that's one of the easier clues towards the end. Okay, so we've got to work with that in a minute. Is that right? That's, that's we'll just leave people. No, you know, knowing that he's six years older than me is lovely as well. Thanks for that. There we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's a little bit younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, now you both talked about routine, and like I guess in the football world, yeah, you know, we're all used to routine, aren't we? Yeah. Um, you mentioned is, is that 
Stacky, you mentioned how perhaps that's important, you know, for home homeschooling. Joy, for you, what's sort of your your daily routine at the moment? And tell us a little bit, perhaps, about about the fitness regime, because as we say, we just don't know when this is going to end, and you might have to be ready in quite a, a short space of time. So, so what sort of things are a you doing, or be or um, be been told to do, or advised to do? No, we've been given programs. Um, you know, everyone's working towards a maybe date in terms of when we might get back in. Um, but honestly, it's I'm, I'm, again, I'm very fortunate to have a gym and stuff at the house, so I I can tick over as and when I want. So I got up this morning about half eight. I've had a little little five k on the on the um, treadmill. Did a little bit of weights. That's me done for the for the morning. Now I'm gonna do obviously after this call, do the school work, do lunch, chill out for a little bit, and I'll probably go back in and do a proper session about five six o'clock. So um, for me, it's just a case of ticking over, um, and also you know just going out and walking the dog and stuff like that, just getting fresh air. So I'm not trying to do too much. It's mainly just weight control and not piling the pounds. And obviously while we're uh, we're off for this time because when we do go back. You know, the weight will fall off us pretty quick anyway, and I'll probably get in the gym with Stacky and, you know, teach him what to do again because he's been having a bit of a beast. <laughs> uh, you can move for three days after. There he is. There he is. It was too <laughs> big. It was too big. Go on, sorry about that. That was my fault. Have you done 5K this morning? What's that? Do you know what, John? I was here. Yeah, I say routine. My routine's changed quite a bit. I was um, I was up at the crack of dawn, so I was up at half five of the missus. Um, We've got up, we just for some reason, I don't know why, but our body clocks are a little bit all over the place. Uh, took the dogs for a walk on the common. Um, come back, I've done under the staircase this morning, sorted out all the toolboxes. I filled up the cars with AdBlue and washer fluid. I've cleaned the boots out. Um, I've done the, under, the, the uh, terrace under the, um, well, I say under the terrace yesterday, and she's got a list of jobs for me to crack on with today. So, um, we done Joe Wicks again, the second day running today. So the kids are loving that at the minute, which is good. Um, so we've got a couple of hours of school work. Then they're going to stop, have a little break, have a half hour. I want them to be out in the sun as well. I want them to be outside in the garden. I don't want them really sitting in the house all day because they can do a bit of school work this evening. So I want to try and strike that balance up. It's not always right, but it's, it is what I think. So I think they'll do a couple of hours, have some lunch, and they'll, they'll be out in the garden for, for a few hours. Um, and then I can have a little siesta, um, hopefully, on the sofa while they're all outside playing in the, and, and catch up with some sleep. Zach, have you given up, any detention yet? What's that, mate? Have you given any of the kids a detention yet? No, nah, they've all got house points and gold stars at the minute. How much interaction is there with the rest of the lads, guys? Uh, I've spoke to the lads. I've, we've, I've got a little goalkeeping group. So I've got Fozzie and uh, and Dan and Gomi. So, I mean, I've been in touch with the lads. I have contacted Troy, but he ain't got back to me. So I've sort of give up on him. Um, so that's fair, I bet you back when you started because I thought, you know what, I saw his name pop up. So I bet <laughs> Yeah, so. To talk to him, though, because, John, anyone that follows Stacky's Instagram, you know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. I get a lot of stick. I've got a feed. It's like having Big Brother in his house. You know exactly what he's doing. So I don't feel like I should tell him too much about mine because he don't really care. <laughs> yeah. Well, to answer your question, John, yeah, I have been in touch with the goalies and I've, I've, I've had a little catch up with them and members of staff as well. Um, but obviously, Troy's no doubt got his hands full being club captain and uh, I'm staying on top of most of the boys and that. No doubt, Troy has been uh, communicating a lot more with the players than what I have. Yeah, just to follow up on that, I've uh, I've spoken to nobody and I've loved every second of it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a bad man. Oh. Oh, so, no, so what I've done, I've, I've let everyone um, adjust, have a week of a, adjustment period. Unlike Stacky, I don't like to be on top of everyone. I'm more of a uh, leader by actions. So I've let people have a week, get them, you know, get to grips with where we're at in, in terms of the world and that. But I've dropped you know, like Mapsy and Ben and a few others, a uh, little text, and just see how they're getting on. But um, realistically, probably going to start picking up with people next week and, and just see what they're how they're feeling. I've, I've give, sent out the um, PFA stuff as well because there's, there's another issue that people don't really talk about. For lads, this is a massive uh, culture shock. So we've had a uh, had discussions with the PFA and sent out some like um, mental health um, helplines and stuff like that, just in case people need to talk to people. So, uh, yeah, while Stacky's hammering me, I'll be doing proper work. 
<laughs> is, anyone, is anyone sparing a thought for Diane Holabas and what it's like being isolated with Jose? <laughs> Again, uh, another one though. No. He's, he's, he's got the best life in the world. His, his Instagram works all of a sudden. He didn't work before. <laughs> Troy, I spoke to Andre yesterday and he said he was doing all he could to make sure Leanne didn't get him to do TikTok videos. Oh, he needs to grow up, mate. Just embrace it. That's the problem. That's just what I'm saying. Me and Stacky are comfortable in our own skin. I'm doing TikTok dances, everything, mate. I've got loads more to drop this week. Um, I had the fat suit on yesterday as well in the gym. You know, I'm doing all... I'm, Got to get all your airs and graces out, mate. I've been eating very well, and I've been training very hard to make sure the weight don't go up. I've also been having a jolly up with the missus and that. Like, mm. I think you've got to enjoy yourself. Like, yeah. most of it. Thankfully, like the, the weather's out. It, like, it's nice weather and stuff. So, I take the dog in the garden and that, and kick the ball around with him. But generally, mm. just from the eight, from like from realistically from like six o'clock at night till ten to when we go to bed, we've just been having a jolly up, putting the music on looking for TikTok challenges, looking on Instagram and just thinking, you know what, well, let's have some fun. I don't really have time to have fun because it's all go, go, go. So I'm, uh, I'm showing that side of my personality, to be fair. And knowing Dre the way I do, I do he said he's, he's letting Leanne, he's told Leanne this side the other, but Leanne tells him what to do. And that's just how it works. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, um, how many takes of the, uh, of, of the TikTok dance that we saw on Instagram last night did it? Did you have it to took do me 25 minutes to get it? <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty good, actually. I was quite, quite proud of myself for that. The missus and their brother were doing it in the in the afternoon while I was in the gym. So I said, "Let me have dinner, then I'll have a blast with you." And then, yeah, it took me like 25 minutes. Nearly had it, but I'm not going to throw it out there. When you're working with amateurs, it kind of brings your level down. So um, I'm used to dancing with obviously high level dancers and that. And it just killed me. I'm used to dancing, but I've had a few too many sherbets. <laughs> I don't fancy myself in the front room. I like a big, I like a sticky dance floor and a bit of a crowd. Troy, do you think we could get Disc doing a TikTok dance? No, I tried to get him to do the um, the toilet paper one, and he, uh, I won't. I'll, I'll post the video that he posted. That he posted to me. Oh no, you're out of order. Yeah, wow. so he, um, he just picked up the loo roll for anyone that won't watch it. He picked up the loo roll, blasted it as far as he could, and then said a few choice words down the camera and said, "Grow up." So yeah. I don't think, yeah, I don't he's think. Uh, me I've got to be honest, Troy. He's keeping me entertained on Twitter at the minute. He makes me laugh. Yeah, he loves it, mate. He's bored. He's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like he's actually at home. He's probably thinking, "I'm just, I'm just going to go and work. I'm going to go to work on people on Twitter at the minute." He's just hammering everyone. Yeah, he ha yeah, he's got he's got a bit of the lock. And he, the, the fortunate thing is, he can say what he wants and has no repercussions. So he's keeping me entertained as well. I've got yeah, him yeah. And, uh, Sky News are the only two alerts that come through from uh, Twitter. <laughs> Troy, I'm guessing one role we could get this to play is to help people to to stay at home. As as yeah. <laughs> how, how important is it to get people to stay at home? Because I saw something from. Watford police yesterday and they were dispersing groups of people playing cricket and, and queuing for ice creams. I mean, could, Mate, could you... Honestly, could it's, you frightening, frightening. it's honestly frightening. Do you know what's going to happen, though? It's going to be the people like this that are going out and about and they're going to be like, oh, it's fine. And the, and the worst thing that ever came out was that it doesn't affect the young because the young now are going, well, it doesn't affect me, I don't care. It's just the mentality of this generation. But I, I do think that and it's going to sound very harsh, and I apologise if it sounds harsh, it's going to need to affect them personally, whether it be a mum or dad gets the illness or a grandparent gets the illness, for them to go, ah, they could have got that off me, I'm going to stay in now. You hope it doesn't get to that, but how many more like warnings and, and you know self-isolation, please stay in, please don't go to work, we'll pay 80% of your wages, don't go to work, and people are still taking it as a jolly up, like, the only thing that's going to happen now is going to have to go to like how Russia is. You go outside, he's five years in jail. But what are the parents doing though, Troy? This is this is they've either got no control over their children, they've got no yeah. respect from their children, or they just can't they can't manage properly. Because I'm not being funny. If my kids then tried to put out the door and they were going to meet other friends in the ice street and going over the park, then they wouldn't be allowed back in. It would be simple as that. So I do. Yes, the kids should know better. Um, do they watch the news? 
are they do they you know are they fully aware of the consequences they probably oh. take it with a pinch of salt they probably are but they probably decide not to really take it on board but for me the parents have got to play a major part and a huge role in making sure that they just don't leave the house as hard as and difficult as it might be um but they've just got to try and get some control back i think over the kids yeah. it's not good Wait. The way that the world works now, mate, even if they're not watching the news, you're seeing it on Instagram, you're seeing yeah, it on Twitter. Yeah, like I think it. they choose not to, read, not, to, not to read it or they choose, as you've, as you've said already, society and, and, and sort of the culture, you know, street culture is that it won't, it won't affect me or it doesn't bother me because I'm yeah. too young. Yeah, definitely. They're seeing it as a bit of a, a jolly up at the moment. And it's a shame because it will affect so many. You've, you've, you've had a perfect example with, Italy and Spain, you see the curve. Um, and, you know, it's just one of them where you have to just hope that people eventually get it. But I, I don't think people learn anymore by by literally listening. I think they learn by seeing it affect them. And I think that's yeah. what's going to happen. And you know. okay. On the flip side of that, obviously, you know, on a more positive note, I know there's a lot of kids that haven't sort of paid any attention whatsoever and have just sort of mm-hmm. gone off their own devices. But I'll tell you what, I've seen some really inspirational stuff on online. Uh, you know, I think it was a Tottenham boys had chemotherapy who was doing kick ups outside. There was another young goalie, I think, from Ireland who was a lead support. He was kicking the ball against the wall, diving across the goal and trying to save it. And I know mm-hmm. Foley put, put a lovely comment um, on and stuff like that. And I know it's had hundreds of thousands of views. But out of all this, you know, out of, some, you know, out of such a challenge, some real difficult difficult times ahead you know there are some really really good stuff there's some great stuff online certainly with young lads and, mm-hmm. and young girls who are who are, who are be, basically being driven by as, as Troy said by celebrities and by players who have taken up the spare time to try and engage and and obviously stay relevant as well but, mm-hmm. but I think it's really really important that because because you know they are idolized and they are they are you know looked up to by these young players and I think just giving them the platform and giving young players a platform now and a bit of a bit of a voice on social media, we're actually, you know, we're looking at their videos, or should I say, mm-hmm. you know, the players are and they're getting recognition now, which is amazing. So, you know, rather than being them kids that are sort of loitering around the streets and are up the park and you know basically in places where they shouldn't be, it's um, it's it, it, I absolutely love going on social media uh, when I get the chance to you know to see these videos and I tell you what it can be inspirational at times so. Um, you know, I'm, uh, that's got to keep going as well, and the players are driving that as well. I've got to say, so so that is good. There's, there's one more bit to add to that. Sorry, guys. There is. Um, it's nice to see families together again as well. I feel like we've gone away from that. I feel like the one thing that the uh, the illness has done has made people go. I've never seen so many people walking. You know, yeah. Like, hey, let's all go and take the dog out. Let's all go and do stuff like that because everyone thinks they're too busy. So as you say, to, to echo that point, I think there's. There's definitely a family feel that's come back, and I mm. think maybe this isolation period might make people step back, reevaluate, and go. Do you know what we're doing too much, or putting too much emphasis on the work and go earn a few quid more than the actual family and, and real life stuff. So, you uh, you yeah. hope that that might be some good com- uh, go forward in the future. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what, what wise words. And obviously, if you are going out, make sure that uh, you keep to the uh, social distancing rules of two metres apart when you see people. But uh, fresh air and exercise, of course, um, yeah, really, really important for both just you know, physical well-being and mental well-being, isn't it? Um, Troy, before we let you go, um, taking it back to a, you know, a football, given this this period, what's what's perhaps the one thing about football that you're missing um, since uh, since we've had to stop? It's going to sound cheesy, mate. The, the match there, there's, there's no, there's nothing you can, you can change. You can't replicate that. Um, Stacky's probably in a better position, having played and then retired to talk about it. But I think, for me, just, just not having a, a Saturday buzz, not having that twenty seconds before you go out when you, where your heart's just pounding and you're like, yeah, it's go time. Um, that's, that's been hard for me again. You can, people, I think this is what most of for me is it really appreciated fans even more. I think I'm one of them that actually does appreciate a fan, um, good or bad. But I think now, you know, even the thought of playing games behind closed doors, you're like, nah, it's not the same. It just it doesn't have the same feel. So um, that's been the biggest thing for me, the, the structure, the playing daily, the bit of banter with like, honestly, going in and just ripping it with the boys. 
you know for the first second you come in, it might be, it might be, hello, how are you doing? Or good morning. But the next two, three sentences that come out of people's mouths are normally hammering you. So that's the bit that you, you do miss as well. But um, the main thing has been, has been the match there. Well, Troy, we, we appreciate your time. Just, love, just before you go, I'm going to give you the second set of clues for our mystery man. Right. So, managers he's played for, or had played for, included Stuart Pearce, Rafael Benitez, Ernesto Valverde twice, and Roberto Mancini. Remind he was born in 1982. He's played in France. He's played in Spain. He's played in the Premier League. He's played in Greece and Turkey and won titles in Spain and Greece and Turkey. Um, his teammates during his career included Didier Drogba, Wesley Schneider. Mm, that's Troy what it is. Is it Galatasaray or not? Yeah. yeah. Troy Deeney, Lloyd Doyley, Stephen Gerrard. Oh, I've got Wesley it. Yeah, Hold I've on. Got it. Fernando Torres, Pablo Zabaleta, Nordin Amrabat, and yeah. Jose Holobas. Yeah, I've got him. So you well, you keep the answer to yourselves for the moment because we're going to give people a little bit longer um, to have a think about it. So just before we end the show a little bit later on, then uh, we'll give you our final set of clues and uh, give you the answer. We'll we'll get Troy's answer off air and then confirm to you whether he got it right after the first set of clues. Troy, great to speak to you. Look after yourself. Stay safe. And uh, we'll hopefully see you soon. Now it's time for the first in our series of The One That Got Away, which is where we hear from supporters who missed a famous game and have regretted it ever since. I'm Andrew French. I've been a Watford supporter for more than 40 years. And the game I really regret missing was the 7-1 second leg win against Southampton in the League Cup in 1980. Um, I think if everyone who said they'd been there actually was there, then the attendance would have been over 100,000. But I'm not embarrassed to admit I wasn't there. And the reason I wasn't there, to be honest, was my dad wouldn't take me. Um, I was only nine at the time. I'd only been going for about a season and a bit. It was a school night uh, and we'd lost the first leg 4-0. And I remember my dad saying, look, let's just save our money. We'll go to the next game. You know, they're not going to go through anyway. Um, and in those days, there was no Sky, no apps to keep up with the score. So I just went to bed in a huff. Uh, I woke up the next morning and there was a piece of paper on the desk next to my bed that said Watford 7, Southampton 1. I'm really sorry from dad. Um, that didn't really make up for it, but I remember buying all the papers and I was really gutted because Southampton at the time had lots of stars like Kevin Keegan, although he was injured for the second game, Charlie George, Mick Shannon. Um, and to overturn a 4-0 with a 7-1, it was just the sort of things that you read in Roy the Rovers when I was a kid. But um, I've got to be fair to my dad as well. He was a Tottenham supporter through and through, still is. Um, but he gave up all that to take me to Watford and we got season tickets. And we went to the game against Nottingham Forest a couple of rounds later. But we didn't see that 7-1. Um, and that's the one I wish I could have seen. And there's not even a video or a DVD that I can get. So the best I can do is live off descriptions. Well, I'm showing my age, but I was there that night. I can just about remember it, what a game that was. And uh, yeah, what a game it would have been to miss. Um, we'll come to you in a minute, Snacky. Kev, have you got one that one or two that stand out that you wish you'd been at? Yeah, two glaring ones for me. I missed the 99 uh, player final against Bolton. And it's a, a really lame excuse. I was working in Next at the time and couldn't get the shift off. So um, that's a very, very... Poor excuse. But I remember during that week and during that period, players were coming in for, for suits. So um, I got to see a few of them at that point. And for some mad reason, I also wasn't at Vicarage Road when, when Troy scored that goal. Um, so there are two massive ones missing from my um, my CV. Yeah, I've done some real random trips like Oxford away, Scunthorpe away, Scarborough away, but missed the playoff final and Troy's goal. So I guess just just the way it falls sometimes. So, yeah. yeah. It's that Mine's similar to you, Kev, funny enough. Mine would have been the, uh, obviously, been a QPR fan, uh, family all sort of born and raised in West London. Um, did play a final, uh, uh, I think it was 14, May 14, uh, against Derby County, when Bobby Zamora scored, scored the late winner. So, yeah, that for me, I was at a wedding, 
um, and it was one that I couldn't go out of. But as much as I tried, um, uh, there was just no way I could have got away for the for the day to go to uh, to go to Wembley. But but that was um, yeah, that was a miss. I've always uh, I've always looked back on and had regrets not going because uh, I think I should have gone um, and then just gone back to the um, to the wedding after. <laughs> well, it be more fun. <laughs> well, I'm sure lots of you out there have uh, have got stories to tell. So do get in touch. Uh, you can drop us an email at the media team at watfordfc dot com. Uh, send us the details, and uh, we'll be in touch. And we look forward to hearing your stories uh, on the coming episodes of the View from the Vic. Um, Snacky, it was great to hear and to, to chat with Troy a little bit earlier. Um, Tell us a little bit about you know, what it's been like working with him over the last few months, and sort of what you know your view of his importance around the place is. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously with Troy, I mean, people, it's, I mean, it's common knowledge around the club, certainly um, amongst the players and staff, not just in the first team, but also within the academy. Um, how influential Troy has been, uh, and will continue to be at the club for, for years to come. Um, I've personally known Troy um, probably, I would say, as you know, not I would never have said we were friends, but we've always known of each other just through being, you know, in the industry we're in and and being and being footballers. Um, and I've, you know, I've seen Troy play over the years. Um, I've always sort of admired the way he's played the game um, without actually not much, you know, knowing too much about him as a lad. Um, only ever seeing what you what you what you see on TV or in interviews and stuff like that. And uh, there's always been a there's always been that sort of rawness to Troy that I've always quite liked uh, and that honesty. Um, and obviously working, well, like when I started working with the academy, I was impressed straight away with <clears throat> with the interaction that Troy had with some of the younger players uh, and the effort uh, and the time that he dedicated towards playing, uh, sort of speaking to, to other players, certainly centre-forwards, um, and showing an interest in, in results and, and how lads were getting on. Um, and then obviously over the last year or so, uh, my role has changed uh, certainly more recently with, with with moving up to the first team and spending probably more time with Troy on a day to day basis. Um, you know, just you know, basically on, on the match day, Troy is you know, is a, <clears throat> he's he's one of your leaders. Um, he's a big motivator, um, but not only does he do his, does he, does he do his talking in the change room on a match day, but he also delivers um, more occasions and not out on the football pitch and. Uh, is a key influencer within the group. Um, but for me, Troy's biggest qualities are not just, you know, what he's like as a, as a player, but I think as an individual is probably where, in my opinion, is you know, are his biggest qualities um, uh, around the club with supporters, as I've said. Um, and, and basically the way the way he drives training uh, and, and the way he sets the standards. Um, so I think he's very, he's very well respected amongst the group, which is obviously vitally important, but but you don't get that respect overnight that comes with time. And I think Troy's earned that. Um, there's been stuff that's happened in Troy's life away from football that, again, uh, shows just what a character uh, and, you know, what a strong personality he is um, uh, to where he's got to in his career, where he's going to go. Um, he's still got, you know, still got years left in him, in, in my opinion. Um, and I, I just think he's been an incredible player for, for Watford over the years. Um, and uh, I just... I, I just think, uh, even on the you know on, on the back of this season so far, with with Troy coming back into the team, uh, he, he had to work extremely hard to get fit. Uh, he came and trained with the twenty threes and the eighteens at times. Uh, he'd stay out, he'd do extra finishing sessions. Um, he'd be there till sort of four or five in the evening sometimes in the gym. Uh, and I think when you see that from the outside, uh, certainly having been a player, you know what's required to get back fit, uh, certainly to the top, uh, and it's not that easy. Because you've spent a lot of time away from the uh, from the training ground, uh, a lot of time away from the grass. Um, it's hard to keep motivating yourself to find, uh, set yourself targets, uh, but also at the same time have a smile on your face and be around the training ground, still able to motivate other people, even though at times you're probably the one that probably needs someone to do that to you. Um, but I think Troy's been brilliant. <clears throat> He's a real pleasure to work with. He's a, he's a joy to be around. He's very competitive, uh, at absolutely everything. Um, so I think he, he he already has that that edge. No matter what you play Troy against, whether it's going to be golf or whether you're going to whether it's going to be cards or whatever it might be, he's always got that that sort of that that, that mentality that I think is is vitally important to get to the top and and be an elite player, um, which I believe he is. So 
Um, he's been massive for us, and, uh, and as I say, between now and the end of the season and beyond the season, I think he'll he'll be a huge asset for the club. Well, in terms of your role and sort of how that how that's changed, t- tell us a little bit, perhaps, about the different differences between working with you know academy boys yeah. and, and then first team keepers. Have you added yeah. a little bit of the way you you coach? How much yeah. difference? Yeah. I think well, well, well. No, I, I say I think so. You certainly coach differently because um, I was very fortunate enough to, to to have got the opportunity I did after playing um, fairly quickly. In fairness, so you know the transition for me from going from playing to into retirement, into obscurity, doing absolutely nothing with my time. Then eventually, sort of finding out what I've wanted to do. That wasn't the case. You know, I retired, and within a week of sort of overlapping when I had sort of had my contract um, terminated at Eastleigh. I was I was I was sort of diving straight into a job with Watford. So I mean that was made really easy for me. Um, but but in terms of working with the Academy goalies, you, you are a developer. You, you're seen as someone who's there to 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 help um, young players. Um, as much as you want to do it on the pitch, I think there's also a duty of care to, to help them off the pitch as well, um, which I've which I've absolutely loved, uh, and I'm really fortunate to have the group of goalies I did when I came into the academy with James Hoskins and and Dante and Adam Parks and uh, and also now Harvey White as well and Miles Rose. So um, and a real good group. Create what you do. You tend to create some camaraderie between you, but you also compete. Uh, you also create some competition, which, which for me as a young goalie is also massively important because um, having an 18s games program with a 23 uh, games program, it's you know having four or five goalies. It's it's important that you that you're pushing all of them at different stages and uh, and at different things for for them to basically you know get the best out of each other, uh, but ultimately play um, at the weekend or, or during the week. Um, a lot of stuff's done away from the pitch in terms of planning and prep, um, recording and reviewing sessions, um, which is probably the side of it that I found probably least enjoyable, if I'm being honest, because I'm not great um, in terms of using, uh, you know, computer and stuff and programs and, and huddle and, and stuff like that. As much as I've done it over the past, uh, you know, in the past and I've got to grips with it, it's, I love being out on the grass. I love being with goalkeepers. I love training um, and I love, you know, building that relationship. Um, over time, uh, but most importantly for me, um, the most rewarding thing at that level is when you see him train with the first team or get an opportunity to travel with the first team, as Adam Parks has done this season. Um, that you know that that reflects well on the goalkeeper. It reflects well on myself because it, you know, you're, you're seen to be doing your job um, and seeing these young goalies progress uh, and perform, which gives them an opportunity and a platform to build from, which is great. Um, so when obviously I was then offered the opportunity to, to work with the first team, which I was absolutely over the moon with, um, to work alongside Hayden as well, um, who I knew previously, obviously with the 23s, uh, was, 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 was amazing. And, and then you get the opportunity to work with the likes of, of, uh, of Ben Foster and, and Guy Mira, both full internationals, Dan Backman and Pontus, who are, you know, uh, under 21s internationals themselves. And, and in my opinion, have, have big, big futures, uh, but to, to get the opportunity to work with Fozzie and, and go me really closely with the coaches that they've worked with, uh, players have played with, the clubs have played for, um, you've only got to go over what they've won um, over the years, um, to, you know, to, to be really, really challenged and, uh, and excited at, at, at the prospect ahead of working with such great goalkeepers. And I think when you're working with first-team goalies, for me, the from you know the biggest thing for me is all about mindset and psychology um, because um, as much as Fozzie will openly accept there's probably techniques that he uses or um, things that he will do within within a game that he will probably never change and I know that and I think as a as a goalkeeping coach you've got to be you've got to understand and you've got to respect that um, and for me the biggest priority for me is making sure that whoever's playing on a Saturday is in the right frame of mind, is physically fit, physically sharp um, and motivated to go and perform. Um, and I think that work is carried out throughout the week. Um, and I think you've got to become a, a good understander of people and you need to understand what's what's going to make them feel good. Um, and if that means Ben Foster wants to play head tennis for an extra 10 minutes a day, then I the important thing for me is to make sure that that doesn't detract from what Gomez and Dan Backman will also need 
Um, so you need to find a balance. You need to make sure everyone is ready, first and foremost, because if anything does change overnight, what you can't afford to do is make sure you spend a whole week gearing up for one of the goalkeepers to play for that to change um, and then someone not be prepared, not be in the best physical condition and not be in the right play, uh, state of mind. So so there is a balance to be had, but I think having played the game uh, for 20 odd years uh, and having worked with some of the best goalkeeping coaches around, uh, I was very fortunate to, to take little bits and pieces from each coach and, and try and build my own kind of sort of, I wouldn't call it a philosophy, it's just my own way of working really. And I, I seem... I seem to find a way that gets players to perform, goalkeepers to perform, and 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 over time, I think you, you know, I'm also still learning, which is which is important, and and, and there's things that no doubt I will change over time, but I think I've got to grips with it uh, pretty well yeah, in the time that I've been with the group, and I think there've been some really really positive performances from the goalkeepers since I've been in uh, involved, which is great. But but listen, at the end of the day, I'm there to facilitate the goalies and make sure that. That they're ready. Um, they, they, you know, they do the hard bit. They go out and they have to perform in front of lots of supporters under pressure. Um, but there's nothing more satisfying for me um, at the end of the game, um, as it's been with Fozzie playing. If he's played well or we've had a clean sheet, then that's the closest feeling I've got to playing again. Um, and that's a feeling you, you, you know, you, you struggle to find again. I must say, since you stopped playing, it's it's very difficult to get to get them emotions back, to get that buzz back. Um, but one thing I will say, when you know when when Foz is playing out of his skin and we're winning games and keeping clean sheets, that's that's about as as close as I'm going to get it back. I think. Well, it's fascinating stuff. We look, we, we that that whets the appetite, I think, for us to all be back, doesn't it? Just you know, um, listening to you there and talking about the uh, the goalkeepers and them preparing and stuff. We just want football to be back and, and as soon as possible. But we know that that's that's not the priority right now. But um, fascinating stuff, Stacky. And um, you know, I think you're going to be hopefully going to be available to join us. Maybe not every week, but certainly most weeks on the View from the Vic. And um, you know, I'm sure people are going to enjoy hearing your tales and. I think we've just uh, we've only just lit the touch paper with you, so um, it's been brilliant having you on today with with Troy, and we, we really appreciate your time. You're and, uh, yeah, wish you well. Keep good luck with the homeschooling. And, uh, yeah, I need it. A grand stack there joining uh, us on the the view from the Vic. Fascinating stuff, as we said from him. Luther Blissett still to come on the view from the Vic, our first uh, official Watford FC podcast. And uh, Kev, you know, re- really interesting listening to to the to the two lads. Um, you know, and the players' perspective, the coaches' perspective, um, and you know, also from yourself. And I guess you know, we given the time that we're we're recording this, you know. They've, they've, as I say, whetted my appetite of we want football back. But, you know, the, the, the key message is that, you know, we've just got to be patient. And when it does come back, then we're all going to be, uh, I think we're all going to relish it, enjoy it and appreciate it just that little bit more. Absolutely. I think there's a great line from Carlo Ancelotti. Was it football's the most important thing of the least important things at, at this time? So it's, it's really put things in perspective. I, I didn't think there'd be a period where, Football wouldn't be on my radar, but it's not really right now. There's there's a much bigger picture at play here. People's people's lives are at risk, but um, yeah, it's great to hear from from the pair of them, and hopefully we can provide a bit of a fillet for for fans in isolation and for those suffering and and, and worried about jobs and health etc. With uh, with with more with more tales and, and anecdotes like that from those two. So thanks to both of them, and 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 hopefully there's there's more to come in the coming weeks. Well, plenty more to come. Um, we should just mention at this point that um, if you if you haven't seen, go to our, our website, watfordfc.com. You can find out about um, the, the club's initiative where we launched last week, Hornets at Home. Um, the club has written to all of its elderly supporters and those with a disability from the information we have on our records, offering the help of fellow Hornets fans. The response from supporters has been fantastic so far, with hundreds having offered their help already. There's still plenty of time and opportunity to get involved. The best way to register your offer of help is by email to ticket.office at watfordfc.com. Please include your full name, mobile number and, of course, your postcode, um, because we don't want people travelling too far. It's really to help people in your immediate community. If you've got a fan ID, then uh, be helpful to put that 
um, in the email as well, ticket.office at watfordfc.com if you'd like to uh, to get involved with Hornets at home. And if you're a Watford supporter or you know of a Watford supporter who is in need of some assistance, then please do the same. Or you can also phone the ticket office on 01923 223023. That's 01923 223023. We'll bring you more news um, uh, across the weeks on The View from the Vic about how Hornets at home is progressing. And of course, you can keep up to date, as we mentioned, at Watford fc.com and via our social media channels you're listening to the view from the vic and time now for the second of our fan features where we want to hear from you this one is called the extra mile how far have you gone to get to a game to support the hornets Hi, my name's Adam Merson. I've been following Watford since 1990, go home and away, week in, week out. Even hooked my five-year-old son, Alfie, into it, so he's got the bug too now. Um, And for the FA Cup final, it fell four days into my two-week family holiday to Turkey. So I paid for me and my son to fly back on the Friday night, um, early hours of Saturday morning, so we could go to the game, and then we flew back to Turkey on the Sunday. Obviously, we was in a worse mood on the Sunday after the result. Um, I should also add that the day of the FA Cup final was my wedding anniversary. Um, so I got the wrath of my wife leaving her behind to come back and follow the Golden Boys. Uh, but me and my son have only missed about four games home and away in the last three seasons. So we couldn't miss a game like that. Well, I'm sure we can all agree that game was definitely worth all that extra effort and it's one that will live long in the memory of all of us. If you want to tell us your story of how you went the extra mile, then drop us a line at the media team at watfordfc.com and it could be you on the next View from the Vic. Time for the last set of clues of our trivia teaser for you now. I can tell you Troy and Graham Stack have already got the answer. Remember, we're looking for someone who's played for Watford Previous clues include he was born in the Balearic Islands in 1982. He's played in Spain, France, England, Greece and Turkey. He won the Copa del Rey, plus the league titles in Greece and Turkey. Very short spell at Watford. Played for the likes of Stuart Pearce, Rafa Benitez, Roberto Mancini. He's also played alongside uh, Drogba, Schneider, Dini, Doily, Gerard, Torres, Zabaleta, Amrabat and Holobas. Your final set of clues are I won 16 international caps for Spain. My only goal in my short spell with Watford came at Vicarage Road against Ipswich and I was a left winger. Bliss it. Good goal. Simple, but so well executed. So do you think you've got it? We'll confirm the answer once we've spoken to our final guest this week. And I'm delighted to welcome the club's record goal scorer onto the line now, Luther Blissett. Welcome along. Hey, how are you doing? How's everyone doing well, I hope, through all of this? Well, we're doing well, yeah. How about you, mate? How are you keeping in this? Uh, well, what's a, a very difficult time for everyone? It is a very difficult time indeed. And you know, before I get started, I think it's important that I, um, you know, I say really on the back of what Graham Taylor has said, you know, family first. Football second, and that will never and should never change, especially at this particular time, because it is very important. So I'd just like to say a thank you to all the NHS key workers and other essential people out there that go out every day and do their job, because without them, we would really would be in a state. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think we can all uh, echo those thoughts. And as you say, it really is a time for, for thinking about, about family. We are going to talk a, a little bit of, of of football as well today. Um, uh, earlier on on the show, we were hearing about um, a supporter who missed the the League Cup game against Southampton when he came back from four nil down in the first leg to to win seven one. Just just tell us a little bit, Luther, if you if you will, about your memories of that night. Quite where where on earth did you dig so deep to 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 believe that you could overturn such a deficit? Believe in. Believing that was not really a problem for any of us because it was one of those unfortunate games where it didn't quite go well. And um, Graham pretty much came out and said to everybody, that was not a Watford performance I saw out there today, but we get a chance next week to put it right. And, you know, I expect you to go out there and, and win the game. And that was basically all he said about the game. And that was our approach is to win 
that second game because Graham was always never be afraid of your opponent, regardless of what the state and the stage of the game is. It's something you can always you can always pull back because you know, and I think that really ties in again into this current situation we're all in now. For us not to be frightened of something, no matter how huge this mountain is before us, is to make sure that um, you know you respect your opposition and respect whatever's before you, but you make sure you follow the instructions, follow the orders that you're given, and do them to the best of your ability, because that way you um, you can get that performance in. And when it comes to the position we're in now as a nation, as a as the world actually at this moment in time. It means that we can also protect each other and protect the NHS, which is very, very important. Hi, Luther. It's Kevin. Yeah. Hi, Kevin. Yeah, I think all, all Watford fans will be wondering just how a, a club legend keeps himself busy during this this period of isolation. I can't imagine you're doing too many keepy ups with with toilet roll or, or doing TikTok dances. Toilet rolls. We, there's no toilet rolls anywhere. There are no toilet rolls. Can't get them anywhere. Um, I, well, it's, it's quite simple at this time. You see, what I what I tend to do, I speak to friends and other acquaintances and I think it's very very important what we do is um, do it face to face we've been pushing this um, this little campaign a little bit which is show your face and rather than send a text send a message or an email or whatever is actually to face um, you know face to face with somebody and um, and actually speak to them because that's very very important at this time because people can be very much isolated in the nature of exactly what people have to do so it's very, very good to, to, to be able to do that and to make sure people keep drinking hot drinks, a lot of hot drinks, lots of fluids all the time and that sort of thing. And that conversation you can have with people is very important. And I do that pretty much every day. I speak to someone and members of the families as well. And also you do a bit of exercise as well. You know, a few things, a bit of stretching and uh, a few weights and uh, run around after this little dog of mine. <laughs> And I understand you're still getting medication for, for elderly relatives. Is, is that right, Luther? Yes, well, that's very important as well. Um, I'm in a position where, thankfully, my health is OK. So I go out and I do what I can to get, whether it be um, to the chemist or go to the supermarket and, um, and get one, so one, you know, one, one or two things, family and, uh, and other relatives and that sort of thing. So... That, that's very important that if you're in a position to do so, you do so. But again, you do it in the safest possible way. And uh, when I when I leave the house, put my gloves on and those gloves don't come off until I get back. Take shoes off, wash your face, wash your hands. You know, even now, to the point where I'm having a shower every time I come back in the house. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very clean at the minute. Well, some some very wise lessons to be learned there, Luther. Um, you, you've got a lot of friends and connections in Italy from your time in, in Milan. How are things there? Could you give us an insight in, into what's going on in, in Italy? Because it, the situation seems quite severe. It, it has been quite severe there. And um, the mayor of Crema, who's, uh, who's good friends of us, they've been giving us some very, very good information of how they have managed to deal with lots of things. And, you know, things about the gloves and the washing and all that sort of thing have come from them. And I think that's a very, 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 very important as well. Um, I mean, I've spoken to uh, Filippo Galli as well. And that's been quite important as well. And one of the things I spoke to them about was, um, you know, getting all the kids, because obviously now the kids are in the house and whatever, just to get all the kids to do rainbows, whether they do them on their phones or do them on bits of paper and put them in the windows, just to share them around so anybody going by their seat and it cheers people up and that sort of thing. And, and it is a very, very good way to focus people and, and keep people together because in isolation, um, it can, as we well know, it, it's not a very nice thing. So it's a very good way to keep that essential contact that we as human beings need with with our fellow um, fellow beings. Mm. Like most uh, diseases and, and viruses, this one doesn't discriminate. And AC Milan legend Paolo Mandini's contracted it, hasn't he? Yes, that's right. So, you know, he, I mean, the good thing about it, if there is a good thing, you know, he is very fit and always has been very fit. And you know, hopefully we'll pull through and it will just be a mild cold and whatever for him and he'll be he'll be back to his old self. So, um, you know, that, that's all you can hope for. And uh, you know, and we pray for everyone every day that people get up and, uh, you know, the next day and they start to feel a little bit better. Luther, given what you've seen in, in Italy and we've seen the pictures coming through on, on various TV channels, how important is it we heed the lessons of Italy and drive home this stay-at-home message because... Yes, lots of people being responsible, but you've got the irresponsible few who seem to be spoiling it for the rest of us and, and, and jeopardising everybody's health. 
How important is that stay at home message? It is very, very important. I've been I've been watching the briefings of, from the uh, Prime Minister um, when they've been coming. Out. And Sunday's one was quite poignant for me because I could see he was struggling to actually not say to everybody, look, you're not listening and it will get, you know, I'll have to come and enforce this if you guys don't get on with it. And what we saw over the weekend was disgraceful, all the people going out, having parties and, and that sort of thing, totally, you know, thinking this thing is not important. Um, this is this is the single most um, deadly thing that we've ever had to deal with, uh, you know, any of us living today. And, you know, we need to adopt the spirit of back in the war when we look after each other and we, you know, and we really look out after each other is a, is a very, very important thing to do. You know, and this, the supermarket thing has been a, has been a, a, been a major thing. People need to people need to do a lot more when they go to the supermarket. I mean, it's all started with all this stuff where people are hoarding stuff and, you know, and the way they go about it. And we as human beings need to be a little bit mindful because we have created this shortage ourselves. The shelves will all be stocked again, you know, by the end of the week. And so people really should not um, should not be panicking. They just need to remember, wear your gloves, you know, that isolation, make sure you are that um, two metres away from people. Make sure if you have, you wear masks when you go out, and, you know, you've got your gloves on and you take every precaution. You respect other people's space. You respect all those various things. And that's very, very important because these are all messages and things that I learned as a, as a 17 year old from, from Graham Taylor. And he was very, very big on, on these things. And, uh, you know, my life has been, um, been uh, really guided very much by those values, family values, family first, all those sort of things from Graham. You, you mentioned uh, Graham there. It, it'd be chuffed to bits at the, at the spirit of this great club show. And again, wouldn't he, Luther, kind of, Used uh, given its facilities to the NHS and the Hornets at Home campaign, it'd, it'd be chuffed to bits, wouldn't he? It'd be, it'd be absolutely over the moon about all these sort of things. I mean, the the, the one thing I the one thing I would say with um with, with the campaign and that is the is the detail information that people need. Um, you know, because the thing is, people have been when they saw it, it was oh, we got to go down there, we're going to sign in, we're going to do this, and I think people just maybe did a little bit more guidance, so it's very clear that. It's not something you can just do off the cuff. It's got to be properly coordinated and it has to be properly guided for, for people to do so. Because just, you know, it's that one fool's rush in, you know, and we need to be very mindful that we don't make a situation worse by our willingness to want to do good, you know. Mm. Because, um, it, it, it is very, very important um, that we do that. Well, we've got you on, Luther. It'd be remiss not to take a, a trip down memory lane and reflect on your time at the, the club and... I think during this period, you can just reflect on a few stats and, and take stock and put your foot on the ball. And, and just to think you made 503 outings for this great club and 186 goals. Yeah. Um, does it take some sinking in and pinch yourself to sometimes still? Because those stats will never be beaten, will they? I think the thing about those stats are it's always been other people have always been very important. We did stats when, when I was playing and the stats was never about, you know, that sort of thing. And the stats was about your performance and how to get the best performance you could every time you cross that white line. Um, but now the stats are how many games you've played, how many goals you've scored and that sort of thing, you know. Um, and people do get a little bit carried away with it because if you focus on the stats and not and actually what you're doing sometimes, you can get sidetracked and it can hold you back from achieving what you should. But that was something that Graham was very, very important, you know, very important to him. And he got that across to all of us. Yes, the stats will be there at the end of your career. Can you look back and see what you've done? But on that journey to the end of your your play, you, know, you just need to you just need to really be mindful of getting the job done every time you go out. And what will happen will happen, and you'll make it happen. Mm. Do you think Troy will catch you in, in terms of league goals? I think he's twenty seven behind you now. Twenty seven in league goals. I, re I really hope he does, because if he does, it means Watford stays in the Premier League and Watford are doing very well. Um, but the fact that the matter is, really, I have no control over that. So not being disrespectful, I don't care. It's something that I did in my playing days, and it's there for people to, to, to try and, uh, you know, their aspirations, can they get to it, can they beat it? For me, it's something I did, very proud of it when I did it, and the players that were involved in it, but I, I really don't care. 
it's uh, it, it it can't it can't do anything for me these days. Well, just, just finally, one player I wanted to ask you about was was Ismail Saar, who was obviously the star of that uh, that win over at Liverpool. I've been racking my brains to think about that second goal we scored and and who it reminded me of. Um, and that I felt was a little bit, as he bore down on Everton, there were shades of, of, of George Weir about that. Um, George Weir? No, nothing of George Weir. That's, come on, Luca. That's, that's me all over. And I indulge me, say, indulge me. I'll tell you why I say that. Um, because after the game, there were people saying to me in the lounges, that reminded me so much of, of, of goals that you scored for Watford and whatever. And even outside people have said it. So I'm going with them, you know, because he's, he's a shy lad, as I was. Probably still are deep down somewhere. Um, you know his performance was was fantastic. That was a real game changer, and I think that was that game will be the one that everybody looks back and goes, "That's when he really announced himself as being and possibly being one of our our, our great players, possibly moving forward." Because the performance was it, it had everything in it, and that pace that he showed um, going on to that that goal was just quite incredible quite incredible so I'm very pleased that he seems to have now got his fitness and got all these other things out of the way and we're starting to see what um, potentially he could bring to us and you know he could be he could be it could be an absolutely outstanding player for Wolf Football Club so really looking forward to seeing um, seeing you know when we get back to play to see him out there on that pitch Did he double his money overnight Luther? Well I don't know if he's doubled his money overnight but he's made people take notice that's for sure and um, that is definitely a good thing. All these things depend on, we must not forget, that's one performance. And as we saw at the Crystal Palace game, we didn't get anywhere near doing replicating that performance again. So that was always my fear after that amazing, amazing result, was can we then carry it again? And we were unable to do it. So we've got this layoff now, which could be for another month, six weeks, two months, before they get the chance to play again. So we hope that when we do get going, and we will, that we can, you know, pick up from the Liverpool game and not the Crystal Palace game. Well, I think we, we look forward to hopefully comparing lots more as my Lassar finishes to Luther, Bin- Luther Blissett finishes over, over the coming months. Luther, um, thanks very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, thanks for joining us. Stay safe, stay at home, stay well, and uh, we look forward to seeing you back in a bit. Say exactly the same thing, Trevor. Be pleased. Take notice of what's been said. Stay at home. If you haven't got to go out, do not go out there. Because staying in saves lives. Well, that's just about it from us, from the view from the Vic for this time. But before we go, trivia teaser answer time. Kev, did you get it? I struggled, John. I struggled. It was the Norden Amrabat that threw me. Go on, put me out of my misery. Well, I can tell you, Troy and Graham Stack both got it after the second set of clues. Um, so we must give them credit. Uh, did you at home? Where did you get it? Albert Riera was the wow. answer I was looking for. Albert Riera only played, I think, half a dozen games for us at the back end of 2014. Um, scored that one goal. Got a red card as well, I think, at Charlton. But um, yeah, tricky one, I think, to start off with, don't you think, Kev? Yeah, he had a uh, he had a very decent career. I'd like to have had a, a slice of the the, the, the transfer fee he got for his muse. That's for sure. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that I think, like like you say, did that the uh, the, the Norden Amrabat Jose Holobas link uh, that threw people off. He played, of course, played with them at Galatasaray in Turkey. It was the Dini and Doyle link at, at Watford before him. But uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, Quite, quite some some career, and uh, yeah, well, well, maybe maybe we'll get him on the view from the Vic at some point to talk us through that one goal and one red card. Who knows? Um, Kev, appreciate your time for for this week. Wish you well. I hope you keep feeling better. Um, we'll have another trivia teaser next time, along with more of your fan tales in the one that got away and the extra mile, plus of course more guests from the Hornets past and present. My thanks to Troy Deeney, Graham Stack, Luther Blissett, and you, Kevin, for joining us this week. Thanks very much for listening. Please, please heed the advice from all the guys that we've been hearing from today. Stay at home. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. Oi, you know what to do. Click the link over there, yeah? Bosh.